Good morning. Welcome to worship on an absolutely beautiful day. A good day for us to gather together. We're going to be uh, talking about the Gospel of John. Uh, we're going to be getting back into the Gospel of John for the next six weeks. And so it's kind of, we're going to be talking about the story, but it's also a little bit of a primer on John. But mostly it's out of the four Gospels, if I had to put them in order of preference of which ones I enjoy the most, John would have always come in fourth. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why, explain to you why, and then uh, explain to you why in this season of upheaval and everything changing constantly, uh, that I've come to love the Gospel of John uh, a lot more than I did before. I'm still more of a Matthew Mark kind of person, but uh, I, I love John a whole lot more. Um, one thing that I did want to remember to say, and I forgot to the last minute at the first service, uh, but because of you're all seeing in the news the Delta variant, um, we're going to keep our worship services the same, um, but we're just going to ask you, and, and we kind of didn't, we were kind of starting to stop some of the things about having you wear the masks in and the masks out um, as we were seeing numbers go down and it looked like all good news and rainbows but um, 2020 and 2021 shows us we need to be a little bit more adaptable so we're just asking you as you walk in to wear your mask to sit down take your mask off and as you walk out uh, wear your mask and a lot of people were like pastor i don't have my mask we're talking you know next week get it uh, Try to get that figured out as we um, just try to keep you all as safe as we can. It's not, this isn't where we hope to be in 2021, and so we're hoping to not make it any worse. So I appreciate your patience and understanding and all that. I realize no one about this news is, yay, masks more. Um, but we're going to try to keep the services the same and uh, those plans for September 19th to. Uh, get back to doing kind of communion in, in a more regular way. We're still going to try and make those happen, but um, I try not to make a whole lot of firm plans lately. <laughs> but so I just wanted you to know about all of that. Uh, hopefully you saw the sign-up table for the FLCC conversations on your way in. We just want to talk to you about where you're at, about where you want your church to go, and, and to put those pieces together. So. Um, I invite you when you see those sign-up sheets to uh, sign up as those uh, talks will start on August 1st. Um, we're not going to, you know, it's not like a timeshare kind of conversation where you come and, and then we make you sign something you don't want to do. Um, this is, you're going to, you don't have to commit to doing anything, you know, well, that's what they say in the timeshare things too. But um, <laughs> we, we, we're just going to, we just want to talk to you. We're not going to try to pressure you into doing anything. So that's just what the timeshare is. Um, there's no, they're, they're just tricky people. There's no getting around that. Um, September 12th is our outdoor worship uh, down at the Port Orchard Waterfront. We haven't uh, reserved the gazebo down there, but the addition to that is uh, we're going to be joined most likely by Spirit of Life and Elon Lutheran, and we're going to have a big worship service together, and we're going to have a picnic together, and then we're going to do some cleanup in the community there together for God's work, our hands. Um, so uh, it looks like that August 29th picnic that we're going to have here, it, we're going to kind of swap it out and that picnic's going to be on that 12th. We'll have um, more information soon, but I wanted to let you all know about that. Um, there is another uh, work party possibly, as you know, there's a homeless shelter most likely going in on Mile Hill. Um, there's a group that's working to help clean up that site, there's a lot of, you know, pruning and garbage pickup and things like that. Uh, the group that's putting it on is Northwest Hospitality. It's run by Anton, and, and he's a member at St. Gabe's. Um, so the, they're a good organization. They, they largely do a lot of work around trash cleanup. Um, and so if you want more information about that on September, oh no, sorry, July 31st, that's this coming Saturday, um, at, from 9 a.m. to noon, there's going to be a cleanup there, and so they have a waiver you need to sign. So if you want to get information about that, just let me know, and I can send you that uh, link. Uh, so just talk to me after the service, and I'll give me your email, and I'll give you the link, and you can sign up there. Um, one other thing that I want to highlight is that 
So obviously I'm here this Sunday, I'm here next Sunday, and then right after church next Sunday, um, I, the family and I, we're going to be leaving and going on a long road trip, and we'll be back on the last Sunday of August. And in that intervening time, you'll have uh, Pastor Dan Wilson will be leading you in worship, not, not the catcher, um, but the retired pineapple salesman that's a pastor. Um, and so we're glad to have Dan here. Uh, we will miss you all, of course, but the, the family and I are going to explore a little bit of uh, this beautiful country of ours. So. Have any other announcements? Speaking of March. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I know this is in the bulletin, but oftentimes we don't read the back of the bulletin. So I just want to let everyone know that on Wednesday, the prayer team is going to be meeting in person here in the church. Um, and it's from 11 to 12. And I just want to invite everyone to come. It's such a great group of people, men and women. Um, but it's, I, I think this is a perfect time, particularly end of one pandemic, possibly heading into another, is it ever going to end, um, to gather together and pray. So I invite each one of you uh, to come on Wednesday from 11 to 12 and join a great group of people that uh, spend about an hour to an hour and a half lifting all of you up in the morning. Great. Prayer team this Wednesday, what time? Um, 11, 11 a.m. Uh, if you want to come for the prayer team at 11 p.m., that's just you, and you probably have to stand up. Uh, all right, I'm glad we can worship together, glad we can be in this place together. I invite you to stand as you are able as we take part in our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we might release our worries and concerns and genuinely enter this space. Let us breathe out our troubles and breathe in you. Take a moment now to breathe. Allow us, O oh God, to grow into fullness, receive your forgiveness, and hear your word for us on this day. Amen. Let us sing.
want to say a quick note of thanks to our praise team. You know, each week uh, we don't necessarily know who's going to be here, and and they always find a way to, uh, you know, put together music for us to uh, sing and praise along with. And you know, I'm I'm firmly convinced that there'll come a time when. Uh, there'll be a Sunday when no one can show up and we'll just have to like, but they'll figure it out and so we'll say, you know, Alexa, play Majesty and, and, and suddenly the, the drums will kick on and, and so I just want to, how grateful I am for the praise team for their flexibility and all these things. And no, I don't want to replace you with an Alexa. Please pray with me. God of all, we thank you for bringing us to this place. We ask that you will help us to realize that you are the one that's in charge. That you are the one that has plans for us and can lead us to those plans. That on those days when we feel out of sorts, on those days when we don't know where to go or what to do or how to get there, we know that you are the God that will find us in the midst of all that. You are the God that will give us strength and peace and grace and mercy through all that we might face. Help us on this day, O oh God, to unburden ourselves with all the control that we think we have, with all the, the things that we think we need to do and all the things that we feel burdened by. Help us, O oh God, to offer them to you, realizing that you will take them, you will unburden us, and you will make us light. Help us on this day, O oh God, to feel lighter, to offer it up to you and know that you've taken it. Help us, O oh God, on this day to follow you, to hear you, to be moved by you, to be unburdened by you. We pray all this in your holy name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share your peace and give a nice little peace sign, a nice little wave, a hello, how you doing there to your neighbor. And, uh, <laughs> this is one of those things like uh, I always I always think the best day the best moment to be a pastor is Christmas Eve when I get to look out usually from the front at all of you holding your candles that is like the most perfect moment um, and but standing up here now, watching you all just wave and uh, give peace signs to each other, it's a pretty close second, I'm going to say. So I will miss this when we go back to more normalcy, uh, but it is just it's really cute to see. <laughs> so, um, uh, Beckett is going to help us out with our offering time now with our bed warmer, not bed pan. <laughs>
here is Beckett on the children's sermon, and then we're going to tell you a little bit about what all that box is about over there. Good morning. It is Beckett and Nash with your children's sermon. And a good of the last part of today's Bible reading, we are going to show you something amazing. Amazing. Today, we are going to walk on water. Ta -da! After Jesus feeds 5,000 people in today's reading, then Jesus walks on water. And this means we should be able to walk on water, right? Yeah. So, how do you think we feel like What's that like? Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. We come to you today. We come to you today. For the greatest of miracles. For the greatest of miracles. Help me to walk on water. Help me to walk on water. Because, uh, because, uh, we want to do it, I guess. We want to do it, I guess. Amen. We are far away from God. God can always find us. God can always get to us. Maybe that's what Jesus was showing us. And why only Jesus gets to do this miracle. He was showing us something about God. Want to try again? Sure. That's it for a chosen summon. Amen. <laughs> So the reminder there um, for all of us is that whatever we face, whatever we go through, uh, even though it might seem like God is far off, God can get to us in those places, and, and God has the power to do that, the power uh, that we learn about through the Gospel of John, which we'll talk about more in a bit. Um, but Becky, do you want to grab the green sign there? So all of you um, collected um, basically presents for Beckett and Asher, you can come up there. Um, because for the last 18 months they have been doing children's sermons um, and so all of you collected and then presented at the first service um, all sorts of things um, for the boys to take on the road trip so um, we wanted to say thank you and Becca wanted to say thank you <laughs> all right let us sing of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length 
and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Our gospel for today comes from John chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. Hear the good news for this day. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as many as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves, left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not even come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea, and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and, he immediate, and immediately the boat reached the land for which they were going. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator and our savior and friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a trope or a, a cliche that plays out in nearly every drama you have ever watched or read. Usually it happens in the rain. There's an important character who has appeared emotionless throughout the entire story, and they need to act, and they need to act fast. But they're always just standing there. The action of the story momentarily pauses in this all-important cliché moment, so we can watch this person do nothing. Over and over again. And there's almost always another character there shouting at them at the top of their lungs, telling the person to do something, care about something. And this other character is usually uh, pounding on their chest. And they're almost always doing it in the same way. It's like this. As if their hands are mallets working to reform this stuck, uncaring heart of this character. I'll tell you right now, 
it is not my favorite story element. And the minute I see that character show up in a story, I roll my eyes and let out a heavy sigh because I know we're going to get a whole lot of annoying scenes where the character doesn't act. The character seems to not care. The character watches as everyone else does what has to be done. Now you're probably wondering, Pastor, it's a hot day, the sun's outside, it's beautiful. Why are you telling me about character development? We are not burgeoning storytellers that are trying to avoid bad character arcs. But there has always been an element of that character in John's depiction of Jesus. I mean, think about another gospel. Think about the gospel of Matthew. Think about the crucifixion in the gospel of Matthew. You have a very human Jesus suffering. He's in pain. He's on the cross and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He hurts like we hurt. He suffers like we suffer. Very human Jesus. But in John's Gospel, you have Jesus that's in complete control, even on the cross. And when Jesus is ready to be done, how does he conclude things? It is finished. So in control, it's like the end of the story. The reason I bring all this up is that in our gospel reading for today, we have uh, this bread of life section from John. More importantly, we have the feeding of 5,000. And it's the only miracle that exists in all four of our gospels. The only miracle. And that this story exists in four places gives us an interesting opportunity to note the differences between gospel writers. To really get into what those God-inspired individuals were trying to show us. I was really, really tempted, I mean really tempted, to read you all four of their Feeding the 5,000 accounts. But it's hot outside, we've got some air conditioning. And I knew you guys were not going to last through two of them, let alone four. Um, so, I, I don't like putting you to sleep during your sermon. You know, sometimes that's kind of a bonus for you if you're having trouble sleeping at night, but not a goal on my part. So I'm just going to share with you Matthew's version to compare with John. And the whole thing is underlining his mind. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. No mention of that little boy. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Take the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed it and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. Jesus is motivated by what in Matthew? Compassion. But line that back up with John's version. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Whereas the Jesus of Matthew was motivated by compassion, the Jesus in John is motivated by testing Philip, is motivated by seeing a bigger picture, I guess we could say. Jesus and John is more detached. Jesus and John is more in control. Jesus and John is a man with a plan. And he will let nothing stand in his way of getting to that plan. Why do I say that? We have a Jesus that shows up in the middle of the water after they rode three or four miles. And Jesus walks out on the sea because there was a storm surrounding them and they were getting worried and he needed to be there. Nothing can stand in the way of Jesus, not even three or four miles of water. 
I'm going to be honest with you, although I'm almost always very honest with you. There have been a number of times where the more removed, more detached, less human Jesus of John has bothered me. I've always wanted to have a God that gets what it means to be me, that knows what it's like to hurt like I hurt, to be confused at times, to struggle at times. And I've always seen Jesus as that ultimate example of my pain taken up by God. But I don't always feel that in John. Because with John, you have this perfect and control figure, and I don't know if you've noticed this by now, we've been together eight years, but I am not perfect. I cannot walk on water, even though I try almost every week and my socks get wet. And yet, even though in the past I've been so bothered by this John Jesus depiction, as I look around the world now, and the heightened level of emotions that we all are going through right now, and as I look around at our community simmering with all sorts of uncertainty, as I look at my own mental health well-being, uh, as I ping-pong ball from issue to issue to issue, I'm reminded of how much I, how much we need a God, need a Savior that can look at the problems of the world and just get it. And not just get it, but has a solution for it. When you hear the story you heard today, there's a number of hard-to-believe elements for it. Feeding 5,000 out of a few loaves and some fish. You might think that's the most unbelievable part of the, walk, of the story. Or walking on water, you might say, well, that doesn't happen. That's way too unbelievable. But when I heard, Jesus said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. I, after going through 2020 and a lot of 2021, I found this to be the most unbelievable part of the story. Jesus actually knew what he was going to do? Is that allowed? You know that phrase, man plans, God laughs? We are living in the age of man plans, God laughs. Jesus actually knew what he was going to do. Good luck with that. Wait. He didn't. He saw the problem and fixed the problem. I'm not going to be pounding my hands like mallets against the chest of this Jesus in John trying to get him to be just a little more emotional. I'm going to now throw my arms around this Jesus and thank him for being the rock that we need right now. A no drama God that has a way forward. After years of avoiding the Jesus of John, I find myself clinging to him now. Which shows us something, I think. This Jesus came and lived and died for us to get through every kind of trial every kind of situation, every kind of problem we might face. We have a Jesus that gets us, and we have a Jesus that can pull us through absolutely anything with the calmness we need in those in these hard times. The song is true. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a Savior we have for each and every one of us. Amen. Let us sing.
faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. into your loving arms, O oh God, and let them know that they are loved. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
you have uh, your little cup next to you. If you peel back the top layer, you'll reveal the wafer, our bread for today. And then if you keep peeling it, you will reveal the grape juice that is underneath that. Uh, communion for this Sunday, I'm going to bless these elements, and then uh, we will say the Lord's Prayer, and then we will all eat and drink at the same time. I realize I just said that to you. We're not going to eat and drink at the same time. We're going to, you'll be eating while I'm eating. You'll be drinking while I'm drinking. Just seemed like a logistical nightmare. I suggested there for a second. So, Together we remember the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed. He took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Remembering Jesus' life, his death, and his promise to come again, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now Beckett's going to come around and pick up your holy trash, and Deacon Marge is going to provide you with the blessing. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.